Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this lecture we are going to discuss eicosanoids, their function types and the synthesis. Well, when we talk about eicosanoids, these are 20 carbon compounds and almost all the mammalian cells except the red blood cells, they produce these eicosanoids, uh, specifically the prostaglandins and their related compounds known as prostacyclines, thromboxanes, leukotrienes and lipoxins. We will be talking about this shortly. Also, uh, these are called um, eicosanoids because eicosano, it stands for 20 atoms. So the name itself is suggesting that these kind of compounds contain 20 carbon atoms. And these eicosanoids, they work like hormones. Uh, basically, the hormones, they are produced in the glands and they are circulated throughout the body. However, these eicosanoids are different from hormones in the sense that they function like that, but they act in the same environment in which they are synthesized. This means that they do not travel because these can rapidly degrade. Also, these are synthesized in the uh, specific site and they can be used by the cells that are surrounding that specific site. Now, the eicosanoids, they function to regulate a lot of physiological responses, including tissue homeostasis, pain, host defense, and inflammation. So basically, these are acting like uh, signaling molecules. So we will just try to understand that what are the different functions of these eicosanoids. So first and foremost, they are responsible for mediating inflammatory response. If I try to give you an example, for example, uh, when there is inflammation happening in the joints, such as in pneumatoid arthritis, and also in case of skin, that is psoriasis. So the inflammation that is happening in these cases is because of the mediation due to the eicosanoid production. The next function of eicosanoids is production of pain and fever. So in case of uh, severe pain in the body or when your fever uh, is happening, that is because of the production of eicosanoids only. The next function is regulation of blood pressure. So eicosanoids are also responsible for regulating the blood pressure in the body. Also, the eicosanoids have a role in the clotting of blood. And one more function includes the control of several different reproductive functions. So uh, reproductive functions uh, such as the induction of labor, uh, that is also because of the eicosanoids. And eicosanoids also have a role in the regulation of sleep-wake cycle. So... As you can just try to notice that out of all these functions, many of them are unfavorable. For example, inflammation, pain, fever, right? So these things are a matter of research in the scientific community. They're trying to understand that how exactly these things take place. So these are some of the important functions of eicosanoids. Now let us try to understand the different types of eicosanoids. So primarily, there are four major classes of eicosanoids, and these include prostaglandins, thromboxanes, leukotrienes, and lipoxins. Now, when we talk about the metabolism of eicosanoids, where we understand that how all of these are formed, these all are formed from one precursor molecule, which is known as arachidonic acid, and this is a 20-carbon molecule. So the primary precursor of the uh, eicosanoid, specifically the prostaglandins, this is arachidonic acid. Now this arachidonic acid is a constituent of the cell membrane. And it is associated with the uh, phospholipids. So the arachidonic acid is released from the associated phospholipids with the action of an enzyme called phospholipase and specifically phospholipase A2. So this enzyme, it acts on the cell membrane phospholipids and dissociates the uh, arachidonic acid from it. And this is the arachidonic acid, which is a 20 carbon molecule, which is further going to be acted upon by different enzymes for the production of prostaglandins, thromboxanes, uh, leukotrienes and lipoxins.
Now, this um these eicosanoid synthesis this happens via two different pathways so basically this arachidonic acid will uh, produce different eicosanoids based on the pathway that it goes through so there are two pathways first is known as the cyclooxygenase pathway and the second one is the lipoxygenase pathway cyclooxygenase pathway is the pathway which is responsible for the formation of prostaglandins and thromboxanes whereas when we talk about the lipoxygenase pathway this is responsible for the production of leukotrienes and lipoxins now all of the eicosanoids that have ring structure uh, these are going to be uh undergoing the uh, cyclooxygenase pathway and the ring structure containing uh, eicosanoids are the thromboxanes and the prostaglandins now how does this happen so this arachidonic acid is acted upon by a class of enzyme which is known as cyclooxygenase and specifically there are two isoforms of these uh, of this enzyme which acts on arachidonic acid which is cox1 and cox2 so these are the two isoforms of this cyclooxygenase cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 the cyclooxygenase 1 is responsible for the production of prostanoids or the prostaglandins under physiological conditions whereas the cox2 which is cyclooxygenase 2 enzyme this is responsible for increasing the production of prostanoids or prostaglandins in the presence of inflammation or at the site of chronic disease so when there is an inflammation going on then cox2 is acting that is why when there is a uh, inflammation uh, the uh, medicines are given which are the inhibitors of the specific isoform that is cox2 so now what happens is that this arachidonic acid it is acted upon by the cyclooxygenase enzyme and there is for uh, there is a formation of molecules pgg2 and particularly then it is pgh2 so these are the different forms of the uh, prostanoids and finally we obtain thromboxanes prostacyclines and prostaglandins thromboxanes they are specifically txa2 prostacycline is pgi2 and prostaglandins we have three different types primary ones which is pgd2 pge2 pgf2 on the other hand side the arachidonic acid when is undergone through the lipoxygenase pathway it is acted upon by lipoxygenase enzyme and there is a formation of this complex which is called 5 hpete which further leads to the formation of leukotrienes and 15 hpete further leads to the formation of lipoxins thank you